Hello everyone, my name is Bethany and this is my channel, Denise Thoughts. And today we are here with my husband, being awkward again. Part two. <laughs> so this is my husband, Billy. <laughs> We're playing a game where we are going to look at book covers and I'm not going to have him look at the back. He's just going to only have to look at the front of the book cover and decide if he can find out what the book is about. Part one was Tim doing YA fantasy and he did quite well. No, it, was, it was more like three. Um, so I will link that up above and you can check that one out if you want to watch. And this is going to actually be a new genre. I'm not going to tell him what the genre is. And he's going to have to guess what some of these books are about, just based on the covers. I decided to do this because I was inspired by In Love and Words. Uh, Brie did this with her husband, as well as Stephanie from Stephanie's Book Talk, Romance Book Talk, did this with her husband. So I thought it'd be fun to do with mine. And so now I'm here doing part two. Shout out to Brie and Stephanie's husbands. <laughs> so yes, so here we go. Are you ready for part two? I mean, I'm undefeated, so. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Here we go. I'm not allowed to look, right? No, you're not allowed to look. All right, so here's for the audience so you can see what I'm going to be having him guess. These are standalones. They're not series like they were in their last one. So, uh, you ready? Okay. Sorry, I, I looked at the back, but I didn't read it. Okay. From Lukov with Love. New York Times and USA best-selling author Mariana Zapata. Okay, it seems to be some sort of ice in the background, and the word and the name Lukov reminds me of something East European, maybe Russian, Czech, something like that. And there are roses tied with twine, and it's a brown bag. So this makes me think. So if it was modern day. It would be cellophane. So it's either olden time or something to do with like a struggling, economically struggling, something like that. She's smiling because I'm landing it. <laughs> he reads me. He tries to read me to guess if he's getting it right. I don't try. <laughs> so Lukov is either the name of a place or the name of a person. Person. Place. Place. Okay. I'm not giving him anything. He's giving me a lot. <laughs> oh, this one's hard. The roses make me think it's a romance novel. But part of <laughs> you're trying so hard to keep a poker face. What? <laughs> I'm not giving him anything. <laughs> poker face. <laughs> I do, I do not have a very good poker face, unfortunately. I'm trying. I'm thinking it's one of those heartbreaking romances that ends with someone dying. There's some sort of tragedy in this. Some sort of tragedy where someone dies or there's an unrequited love. But I want to say someone dies. What? Okay, someone dies. Based on the name and based on the color scheme of the background and the font, I'm thinking some sort of uh, Ukrainian, Russian, uh, a country like that. And if it's something like that, to make it interesting to the point where it's a hit with American audiences, I'm thinking long distance love. So I'm thinking man and woman are in love. Maybe they've met when they were younger, maybe not, but I'm willing to bet that they met <laughs> They met when they were younger, somehow reconnected. However, now distance is the main antagonist. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. You were on the right track in the beginning, and then you kind of went off the rails a little bit. Okay. Um, so this is actually romance, that is right, but it's actually... One for one. But it's actually an ice skating romance. They are friends, they are more like antagonists, they're kind of rivals, and he invites her to be part of his partner's team, and they end up being ice skating partners, and it's a romance that builds as they're an ice skating team. 
Mariana Zapata. <laughs> so don't knock her for her cover. I just Be wanna, nice. I just want to say, from the bottom of my heart, good play. <laughs> this was my first miss of this series. <laughs> It wasn't his first miss. It was like his third. <laughs> it was the first miss of both videos. When you got got ice, I was like, "Ooh, this might be interesting." And then you then you went off. I don't know where you went. Where you the went. ice threw me off. Okay. Well, and Lukov is his last name, so he is of I think East European ancestry or something. I don't think he's actually East European though. Okay. Miss Mariana Zapata, ice skating romances are a trope that have not been fully explored, and I applaud you for writing this book. It's actually one of my favorites, I will agree. I never thought ice skate romance would be would be a thing, but it's a, quite enjoyable. Have you ever had sex on ice skates? <laughs> Ew, no. Oh. <laughs> Neither have you. <laughs> Gave her my triple axel. <laughs> Next one. Intercepted by Alexa Martin, a great, hilarious, and thoughtful romantic comedy by Jasmine Guillory, USA Today bestselling author of The Wedding Date. Okay, couple, couple things I'm noticing. Okay. First of all, it's a romance and a comedy. Uh, it's great, hilarious, and thoughtful. Am I right so far? <laughs> well, you based that off the blurb. <laughs> Am I right so far? <laughs> yes, technically. <laughs> I'll take any technicality I can get. Football necklace. Intercepted. Thinking romance. There's a football player. And a woman. Obviously from the look. Well, I don't want to make too many assumptions there. But I'm going to say for the sake of the plot. Woman. Necklace is gold. I'm thinking money is involved. I'm thinking she wants to marry a football player for money, ends up falling in love with him for real. Am I right? No, not no, 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 not really. Hold on. No, so, no, 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 no. You can't try again. You can't try again. <laughs> nope. Intercepted. <laughs> you can't catch An interception. It. Like you catch it when it's on the way to. She's dating a football player. She ends up leaving said football player. Another football player tries to win her. Women are not objects to be passed around and intercepted. <laughs> That's because it's a football romance. That's disgusting, <laughs> Bethany. <laughs> That's why it's intercepted. That that's is why disgusting. It, that's why it has the title. He inter tries to she intercept. She was just an object on the 50-yard no, line, and I was not, trying to get a touchdown. It's not what that's it's about. That's disgusting. <laughs> that's not what it's about. And it is, a, and, and I think you were trying not to assume, but I think you guessed it. It is a woman of color. That's the book it's about. So she's, so she's with another guy. She meets this, she meets another fo new football player that comes to his, to this, to her boyfriend's team, and... Uh, she leaves her boyfriend, and he tries to woo her because they had connection. Just lateraling her from one man to another. <sighs> Didn't it's not like it's not like that. It's not like that. It's a great romance. I stand with you, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Olivia dates. Spoiler alert: one true pairing. Well, mostly true. Okay, okay, I think I got it. He's wearing Prince armor with a rose on it. Rose usually indicates romance when it's indicated on a cover. First thing you notice about her, bright red hair, fair skin. So she's a princess, or descendant from a princess, or your average Cinderella type. But she is a plus-size heroine, which I'm sure will come into play. One true pairing, well mostly true which makes me think he's a dream prince that makes me think he's like a dream prince or someone she made up or something like that they're in the city looks like san francisco what i've been doing is i've been sussing it out but i'm gonna go all in on this mm -hmm. i'm gonna go all in on this are you ready are you ready pause the video right now wait don't pause it yet let me tell you what you should do then pause it <laughs> Write in the comments, Billy got it right, even if I didn't get it right. <laughs> Sp 
spoiler alert. The word spoil the, the name. The name throws me off. You'll be so disappointed if you don't get this. What I think it is, is it is this plus size heroine who makes up a fantasy man, falls in love with the fantasy man, but in the real world, there's a real world man who's interested in her, but she doesn't see it, ends up falling in love with him instead of the fantasy lover when she realizes it's a fantasy. Spoiler alert, they get together. <laughs> that was a little bit closer. That wasn't too bad, I guess. Uh, it is a romance. You got that right. So, so I'm assuming well, you guessed... they're making out. So I'm assuming you guessed the genre. Yes. Okay. Chauvinism. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is about... Uh, they are two fan fiction writers. They know each other through fan fiction. So he's in cosplay. And we go to Comic-Con. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> There's an extra but, though. He actually is also plays the actor of a Game of Thrones-type show. But they also know each other through a fan fiction board. They don't meet in real, in, in real life until they go to a con together. Like any actors would do fan fiction. Actually, no, a lot of good famous people do fan fiction. Well, there's plenty of fan, possible famous people. Or Shout out to Ember Moon, who's totally watching this channel. <laughs> Or they are secret about it. That's true. And they don't reveal... Because he doesn't realize he reveals identity for writing fan fiction. Anyway. I write fan fiction donkey porn in my free time, and I'm pretty secretive <laughs> about it. No, you don't. <laughs> the latest one is a nay in the hay. <laughs> What's great about it, actually, and what a lot of people really appreciate about it, is that she basically, Olivia Dade, basically digs at the last season of Game of Thrones. I haven't watched it. <laughs> Neither have I. But the fact that she digs at it, I kind of have to appreciate <laughs> as just someone who is can appreciate a fandom. So, anyways, yes. I am not doing well at this one. No! You did much better at the YA fantasy than you're doing at the at, the, at this genre, love. Okay. Next one. Okay, I'm, I, there is a sticker covering the author name, so I will tell you the author name. Because, well, I don't, uh, I don't need it. Oh, you don't? No. Because that is obviously Christina Loren. Love and Other Words, best, or New York Times bestselling author. I've seen her name around. A Triumph, A True Joy from Start to Finish. Kristen Harmel, author of The Room, and Rue Amelie. The way that the words are strung together on brick piece of paper hung together by twine makes me think that the romance in this has something to do with a writer or words or poetry or something. And it's a woman who, I'm, I'm guessing woman just because woman author romance, usually a woman protagonist. Am I right on that? Yes. In this particular one, yes. Sometimes A lot of romances usually do du dual points of view. Du dual points of view. This one does not. Heartbroken woman doesn't believe in love anymore because she got out of a bad romance. Meets an editor or a writer she falls in love with. Love in other words means love is just another word to her until she rediscovers its meaning. Oh, yeah. Not too bad, actually. So this is what's referred to as a second chance romance. They actually met as kids. Okay. And then there's a very tragic event that happens that splits them apart. Okay. And they meet again as adults. What's the tragic? Oh, I guess you can't give a spoiler. I don't, can't give a spoiler for the tragic event. But um, Alien invasion. <laughs> so, uh, but love in other words, they do write um, letters and notes to each other. In, in, as kids, they did that. So. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So oh, it, there's, there is letter, there is some letter writing. So I think that's where it comes. I think it's where that comes, the whole title comes from. So, and they, and the, I think the twine is because it's more rustic because they met in a cabin. Oh. Like a summer. It was like a cabin that they would, she would go to in the summer. So. It's always a cabin. <laughs> it's never like a Motel 6. So I think that, so you were actually not, I mean, not too far off. Woman discovering love. She kind of lost it along the way because of a tragic thing. So, Isn't that like every romance novel though? Not necessarily. Sometimes oh. the guy has a tragic past. Oh, I can't do this anymore.
You have a tragic past. I have a tragic past. (laughs) Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Or Talia? Talia Hibbert. Best-selling author of Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Their relationship is all for show, right? Okay. A fizzy, intoxicating sense of humor that bubbles off the page. This one seems evident. I'm just going to go for it. Okay. Two people who have a relationship that's fake. Maybe they're celebrities or they're doing it for some other reason. Lots of emojis. The emojis are going to play a role in it. It's something It's something related to like texting or messages or something like that. They have an online public relationship, but it becomes something real. There you go. Yeah, you pretty much guessed it. Um, so this is about uh, Danny Brown and Zaf, uh, Zafir, and um, they are uh, go viral on Twitter. Okay. And Zafir is a former rugby player who uh, has a foundation. He gets a lot of. He starts getting a lot of business to his foundation so they decide to highlight on their fake dating and decide to seem like they are fake dating online to continue their viral success okay and of course yes it does become something real this is like one of my favorite books from last year it's it's really great so yeah so you pretty nailed that you nailed that one you did the and you got the emojis thing yeah i think that's probably that's probably the only one that you did get out of the romance (laughs) so i'm 10 for 10 (laughs) now this is one for five (laughs) So, Any wrestling fans out there? Ten. <laughs> no one's gonna get that reference. Oh, no one's nobody's gonna get, gonna get that ten. So yeah, so you did much much better at the YA fantasy. I do think though that romance covers generally don't give as much away as YA fantasy as YA does in general. YA is more makes more splashy covers. Romance usually has more subtle covers, which makes sense. I think YA goes for that flash and that flair, especially because there's so much on the bookshelves now. You have to stand out. <laughs> Uh, with romance, there's such a dedicated uh, fan base. I know nothing about romance. <laughs> Book trope or otherwise. So, yeah, but you, but so yeah, romance, I thought, I thought, funnily enough, I thought it was going to be the other way around. I thought you were going to do better at the romance than the YA fantasy. But it's all good. Thank you for coming to Billy Fails at Relationships Live. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely not true. You're doing a great job. I've been with you for 13 years. I think I'll stick around for a few more. We're writing our own romance novel day <laughs> by day. Oh, well, we're not going to get that cheesy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what are you doing? If, if you want Bethany to do this with me, <laughs> but with horror books, <laughs> comment down below. <laughs> Imagine her trying to guess horror books. Oh, it'll give her nightmares. <laughs> Comment is, down below. This is accurate. <laughs> so that's it for me today. And Billy, thank you, babe, for joining me and, and doing this with me and having fun. If you like what you saw and want to see more things from me, please subscribe and hit likes and bells. I would really appreciate it, as well as you can follow me on all sorts of social medias, um, where I might mention this guy every once in a while, so you can see more of that as well. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye!